In this Gadget Talk, we're going to take a look at a very inexpensive shortwave listening antenna that's become quite popular in the shortwave listening community. A couple of my reviews related to shortwave listening have been big hits on the channel, indicating there are a lot of folks who are interested in the hobby. The development of SDR radio dongles and a variety of small, inexpensive antennas has resulted in lots of folks exploring the airwaves. Shortwave listening goes back to the dawn of radio communications, and new tools make enjoying the hobby very inexpensive. Before we take a look at the U-Loop Passive Loop Antenna, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you'll mash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel where we look at a variety of cool electronic gadget, tools, and toys. The U-Loop Antenna is a passive shortwave antenna that is described as a generalized Mobius antenna or noise-canceling passive loop antenna. There are two things about this antenna I find particularly interesting. First is the fact that it is a passive antenna. Unlike the MLA30 antenna I've reviewed on this channel, this antenna doesn't have any powered components. The other thing I think is pretty cool is how the two conductors in the coax that makes up the loop swap at the top of the loop. Let's take a quick detour here. A coaxial cable, or coax, is a cable that has two conductors, thus the co in coax. The inner conductor is often a solid wire that provides some stiffness. This is covered by an insulating dielectric material to separate it from the outer conductor. It may or may not have a foil shielding layer. The outside conductor is a braided wire sleeve that covers the inner conductor. The entire assembly is covered in a plastic sleeve for protection from the elements. Coax conductors have a plug side and a socket side. The center conductor forms the plug and it fits into a socket on the receiving device. The outer conductor is connected to the outside part of the connector, which makes a solid contact when conductors are screwed together. What's cool about this antenna is that the small box at the top of the loop swaps the connector so that the inner connector is paired with the outer connector passing through the box and down the other side of the loop. The bottom box contains a ballon, which is an abbreviation for balanced unbalanced. This device is used to match a balanced signal from something such as the antenna to an unbalanced signal present in the coax. Let's take a quick look at what you'll get when your antenna arrives. So let's see what comes in the box. You can see there's not too many pieces. They're all individually wrapped, a lot of them in these static protection bags. So let me take a moment and get all this stuff out of their bags and we'll talk about them in more detail. Okay, so here is the bottom of the U-loop. You can tell it's got the three connectors, this one going to the radio, the coax, and this one is where the two loops will connect, and it's labeled as the ballon. Again, I explained that earlier. So we're going to get in and in. Up here is labeled and out down here, and it's called a T-shaped low-loss wideband ballon. So that's going to be the bottom of your U-loop. At the top of the loop, where each half will come in here on the SMA connectors where these red uh, protective covers are mounted, is the phase inverter. And this is where the uh, inner connector is moved to the outer connector on the other side and vice versa, um, giving us that uh, Mobius style um, antenna loop. So this is the phase inverter and it's going to go at the top. Next, there are the, uh, the two coaxes that make up the loop. You can see there are two of them here. Each of them the same. They have an SMA connector 
um, here on each end with the um, plug on this end, the male end here. And uh, you can see they're, they're not very long and they're fairly stiff. So they're going to be able to allow you to have a, a loop shaped uh, antenna if you've got it you know, hanging from the ceiling or from a pole. So there's two of these in the box. And now the last thing in the box is the uh, coax, again, SMA connectors on this. Uh, it's a fairly long piece of wire, and this will go from the antenna to the SDR dongle uh, or to whatever radio it is that you're using the antenna with. So this is the antenna lead. It's going to connect to the bottom of that T um, ballon that I just showed you, and then head off to your radio. So that's what comes in the box. Now that we know what's inside and how this goes together, let's try it with a couple of radio alternatives. You may have noticed that the antenna is described as working best with HDR, or high dynamic range radios. This mainly refers to SDR radios. In this test, I'll be using an RTL SDR dongle as my analog to digital converter. This is not an HDR device. The RTL SDR has an 8-bit sample rate, which one article I read said could be computed as having about a 50 dB dynamic range. An analog to digital converter having a 12-bit sample rate would compute as about 74 decibel dynamic range, and an analog digital converter having 16-bit sample rates would compute to about a 98 dB dynamic range. The AirSpy HF Plus SDRs list their sampling rate as 18 bits. They are also more expensive, so we'll see how a lower dynamic range radio works. The MSI SDR pan adapter receiver claims to have a 12-bit sample range, which would add significantly to the dynamic range. They are available on eBay and Amazon with some accessories. They're about twice to three times the cost of the RTL SDR, but still less than $100. The AirSpy HF Plus SDRs claim an 18-bit sample, but are more like $170 US. So, there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful as you think about adding a shortwave listening antenna to your radio kit bag. Please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.